Good morning, folks. Welcome to another episode of the Tin Horse Mining YouTube channel. We're at beautiful Table Rock Lake, Mill Creek Resort. Really nice place to stay if you're looking for a place to stay. In the Kimberlin City area, Mill Creek Resort is the way to go. We've got a private boat ramp down there. We've got slips. Come with the room. Come with the cabin. Nice cabins. they got different sizes. Very affordable. Great location, man. We're back in the Mill Creek area, obviously Mill Creek Resort. And we're getting ready to go out and do some pre-fishing. We got BFL tomorrow. We fished yesterday, but we had miserable conditions, so I didn't do any footage. Um, I probably should have because we caught them good. We had some pretty good quality fish, but it snowed, rain. We had 20 plus mile an hour winds, and it was 40 degrees. It was just a cold day. But we got on them. We're gonna go try to run that pattern again. See if we can produce that same bite all the way down the lake. Just hit as many of the, many of these little pockets and creeks and stuff as we can until we run out of time and leave it out there on the water. Mike, what's your, what's your thoughts for today, man? Go catch big largemouth. There you go. We're Pretty focusing on largemouth, right? Yeah. yeah. We either caught big largemouth or short spots, so yep. we're going to go find some more of those spots. Hopefully it works out. Been bitten by the good practice before, but yeah. also know to switch gears if we need to. But totally different conditions. Bluebird totally. skies, hardly, hardly any wind, so exact opposite conditions. No snow today, which I'm looking, I'm, I'm okay with that, man. It, okay it, was, that. it was tough out there yesterday. Yeah. Weather-wise, it was tough. It was tough. So, boat's in the water, we're walking down the hill, we're gonna get out there and catch some fish. Sucker. Yeah, yeah. He's doing his share of eating. Pretty fish. Nice. I was listening to that one Rogan where that guy was talking about the kangaroos in Australia. How they have like a they have like a, over a million rogue camels or wild camels in Australia. Hmm. They actually I think uh, Saudi Arabia buys camels from Australia. Yeah. Good one? That's a keeper. Pretty fish. Fat. I bet that's the same one that came back with yeah, that thing's built good, man. Solid fish. Hey, give me a thumbs up if you appreciate the content and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Mike and I were running around trying to find these areas of runoff. The day before we had a really good day, you know, but it was overcast, it was actually snowing, sleet, rain, 40 degrees, wind blowing like 20 miles an hour, miserable conditions. But we caught about 16 and a half, maybe 17 pounds running and targeting these runoff areas. Prior to the trip, the area had like two or three inches of rain. So we were trying to find those little runoff areas, backs of these coves, backs of these creeks that had that stained water. T Table Rock um, is typically anywhere from eight to 15 foot of visibility. The areas that we were fishing and catching these fish in were like three to four foot visibility. Some of these areas were like a foot of visibility. So fresh runoff is key. That's one of those patterns that you can find in the spring as long as the water is close to 50 degrees. If it's any colder than that, it usually, usually kind of shuts the fish down. That cold, muddy water is notoriously difficult. So as, water, as long as your water temperatures are in the 50s or above, targeting that runoff is a great pattern in the springtime. Key areas to look for are any place where there's a little bitty stream or a ditch running in. You can get on Google Earth and you can look and you can kind of pinpoint, you can pull up your you know, Hummingbird, your Lawrence, your Garmin Graph, and kind of look and see if you see those little tails coming in. Any of those coves or cuts or little pockets that have a little tail in, there's a good chance that they're gonna have some off-colored water. But on a lake like Table Rock, not every little cut that has a little tail coming in is gonna have stained water. If you pull into a major creek and there's maybe, let's just say there's 10 little side cuts 
only one or two of those are going to have stain. So to find this pattern, you've got to stay behind the wheel. You've got to stay on the, um, you got to move around a lot. You got to look, you can't get lazy. You got to jump in the boat, cover water, go to the backs of these pockets. Look, if, the, if it's not what you're looking for, don't stop and fish. Just keep moving, keep moving and keep pattern, trying to pattern these areas and figuring them out. There's a bite in that brush pile. It's a big fish. That ain't it's not that big. Little large mouth, folks. Little large mouth. A couple reasons why targeting the runoff is a great pattern in the spring is it brings in fresh water. You got a lot of oxygen that's coming in. You got a lot of nutrients that are washed in from the hillside. These nutrients will track, attract shad and bait fish, and then the predator fish will key in on that. There's also the water color. Bass are predators, and they can hide in that dirty water. They'll pull up shallow, which makes them more accessible they become target oriented. So any kind of big rocks in the water, any kind of lay down stumps, those are high percentage areas to focus. So instead of having to fish out deeper, you can slide up shallow and you can cover some water and you can just focus on these key pieces of hard cover. It's a great pattern. It's not just table rock. This works all over the country. Any lake that has runoff in the spring is a great pattern to target typical you know, baits, we were throwing a jig and a shaky hit speed crawl to catch our fish the day before. And we were actually doing the same thing on this day, but moving baits, you know, your crank baits, your jigs, just focusing on that hard cover and covering water. Mike is hooked up. That's a good hook shed, man. That's a nice one. Oh yeah. That's a real nice what one. I was catching yesterday. It's a solid fish. Get up and help. Get up here. Another key pattern in the springtime is focusing on these main lake points. These are kind of staging areas. These fish that have been out deep in the winter, they start moving up to the points. Main lake points right outside of creeks, main lake points right outside of coves and pockets are staging areas for the bass before they start migrating back into the spawning flats. Standing timber on table rock is key. You know, an Alabama rig, a jerk bait, a little Kitek, like a 2.8 to 3.3 inch Kitek on a quarter ounce ball head. If you have active target or live scope, it's even better. You can really pinpoint those areas. You can scan. If you see bait in the area, you can stop. You can drop your trolling motor, kind of spin the head of your trolling motor around with your forward facing sonar, pinpoint the fish that are located in the standing timber and cast. You know, you need three, probably three baits. Like I said, an A rig, jerk bait, and a swim bait to attack these fish. And move on stay there for a little bit locate the fish if they're not you know if they're not cooperating start jumping different points usually different sections of the lake are going to be on fire not necessarily on fire but you'll be able to catch fish in certain sections of the lake and other sections of the lake it's just not going yet in the same way even certain points within those sections of the lakes are going to be firing while the other ones are not sometimes it's a timing thing most of the time it's a timing thing and you got to check those those points multiple times in a day Sometimes the shad, the shad are moving around a lot. Um, the bass are moving with the shad. And just because you check the point in the morning doesn't mean that those fish won't be on it in the afternoon or in the evening. So if you've got a good point, if it's got deep water next to it, it looks like it should be holding some fish. Make sure you check that point multiple times throughout the course of the day. There he is. I don't know if we'll keep or not. You got the skunk out of the boat, dude. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. All right. Thanks. Appreciate it. From that car? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I was just hopping that jig. Yep. All right. We're on the board. Woo!
feels good. You can also try a jig or a shaky head or even a Carolina rig on those main lake points. If you've got wind blowing in there, overcast conditions, you certainly want to try a rock crawler or a wiggle wart, some, some type of moving baits, a spinner bait. If you got a little bit of stain, which typically happens when you've got a lot of wind, that's just gonna make that bite turn on. So it's not just looking for those suspended fish with forward facing sonar. It's also covering some water with bottom baits or some moving baits up shallow because those fish will definitely slide up if the conditions are right. Another great pattern in spring is secondary points, targeting those secondary points. So you've got the main lake points, you've got a cove, and as you go back into the cove, there'll be smaller points. These are called secondary points. Fish use these on their migration route back to the spawning pockets. A lot of times they'll set up on these secondary points, they'll stage on these secondary points, and they'll slide into little cuts and little coves, just little indentions. They're not actually like a cove, it's just a little cut. It's got the right ingredients, it's a little bit flatter, it's got some pea gravel, just some hard bottom, and those fish will spawn. So they'll sit up, they'll stage up on these secondary points, and they'll wait for conditions to warm up. Smallmouth are gonna go first. They're gonna spawn before those spots and the largemouth. So after the smallmouth, it's typically the spots and then the largemouth. When that water gets in the mid 50s, if conditions are stable and it's kind of a warming trend, those smallmouth will pull up. But they'll be, before they pull up, they'll be sitting on these little secondary points. They'll start on the main lake points and they'll work back to the secondary points. And then when conditions get right, they're going to slide into these little short pockets or continue back into the backs of these, you know, these coves or these creeks to do their spawning. So water temperature is key and the secondary points are key. What to look for on the secondary points? Any kind of cover, standing timber is key. Just good hard bottom. If you got some boulders, some you know bigger chunk rock that seems to hold the fish, they're gonna be keen on crawdeads usually by this time. They kind of get away from the shad and they start locking in on the crawfish. Crawfish are a high protein source. They've got more, it's more bang for the buck. You know, crawfish has got a lot more protein than a shad and that's what these fish are looking for. They're really gonna feed up because when they go on the bed, they don't really eat. So there's this period of, depending on if it's a male or female, if it's a male, they're on the beds for quite a bit longer. But regardless, there's gonna be a week or two possibly where they're not gonna be eating a whole lot. So they really gorge before in the pre-spawn period before they go up on the beds. So look for these kind of areas. Docks are really key on these secondary points. These are staging areas as well. Nice, bro. Fatty. Look at that, how wide that fish is. Good God. These fish will get on the corners of the docks and they'll wait for things to get right. Typically, the front of the dock is a lot deeper. This is a good staging spot. And as they get closer to spawning, they'll spawn underneath the walkways of these docks. But they'll progressively work in closer towards the bank um, as the conditions improve and get more conducive to the spawning cycle. So docks are key. Never pass up docks on these secondary points. Um, usually the first couple ones right there on that point are gonna be your high percentage targets. The afternoon is prime dock time. Once that sun gets really, really high, the docks create a shade point. Fish will like to set up in that shade. Um, they're in the dark and they can see out into the light. You know, they're going to ambush shad that are coming through the area. It's just the way it works, but always want to try some docks on those secondary points during the pre-spawn and any time in the spring. Any lake is not just table rock. You got docks in your lake, high percentage areas, secondary points. There he is. That's a better fish. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> Thank you, sir. That'll keep. Whew. Right in the top of the mouth. Just like secondary points, bluff ends are key structure to target in the spring and the pre-spawn. The fish that live out deeper in the rivers, 
or on the bluff walls, they're going to migrate to the ends of those bluffs. Typically you have a bluff in and it's a point and there'll be a shallow point there. And that shallow point a lot of times will lead into, lead into a small cove or a little cut or a pocket. This is a staging area. Those fish that have been living out main lake during the winter, they'll migrate to these bluff ends and they'll stage there. They'll wait for the conditions to get right. These are very high percentage areas. You can target and cover a lot of water if you just specifically pattern these bluff ends. Pull up to bluff end, scan it, see if it looks right, if it has some wood, some different kind of rock changes. Um, if it just has the right ingredients, put your trolling motor down, scan around if you have forward facing sonar and see what's going on. Um, it doesn't hurt to fish it a little bit. Spend 10, 15 minutes. If they're there, they're going to bite pretty quick. Move on. You know, you can cover several miles of a river or of a lake if you just stay on the motor and don't get lazy. Just keep going, man. Just keep going. Bluff ends are high percentage areas. They're right there where they need to be. They're getting ready to make their way back into the little cuts off of the bluff ends. But look for those ones that have a slow, slow, nice, flat kind of taper to it. And it's even better. If there's a pocket on the backside. If there's a dock, that's just another high percentage area. Same type of deal. All the baits mentioned before are going to work. You know, your jigs, shaky head, drop shot, a rig, jerk bait, little swim bait. These are all the kind of baits that you want to be throwing. If that thing gets really flat and the wind is pushing in on it, crank bait, the rock crawler and the wiggle wart. Um, series three, you could probably even a 5XD, depending on how deep it is. But just keep moving. That's key. If it looks right, and you're seeing activity, if you're seeing bait on the graph, it's definitely a place to stop and check, especially if you can see where they're going. That's a whole key in the springtime is you've got a staging area and you can see where they're going. So if there's a river channel here, there's a bluff in and there's a pocket, they're going back to that pocket to spawn. They're gonna be somewhere between that river channel, the bluff in and the pocket. And once you can kind of figure out where those fish are a high percentage area where, where they're most likely to be and if you start catching some fish then you can really isolate that pattern and cover a lot more water on that bluff end pattern might have been a bite it was a bite it might have been a bite and it was a bite yeah hit it twice nice Fatty, he's throwing a little 3.3 Kitec, quarter ounce head. It's been kind of slow. Conditions have definitely changed. The bite's definitely changed, but there's definitely some shad starting to move back in some of these pockets. We're in a spawning cove. So, it's kind of end of the day. We come back towards where we're staying at and just jumped in this little spot and check it out. A couple bites in here. One more pattern to look for is right in the pre-spawn and the spawn. It's when these fish are actually up on these flatter points. They'll get on these flatter points, they'll get in these little coves. Pea gravel is key, smallmouth really love. Smallmouth and spots really like to spawn in that pea gravel. So main lake stuff. It doesn't have to be real far back in a creek. It can be main lake. Just anything that's a little bit protected, just the right kind of stuff. So you're looking for these little cuts and these little shallow kind of, we're talking your boat is in, you know, 10 foot of water and you're a cast and a half off the bank, maybe two casts off the bank. Pea gravel, rock, that kind of thing. These are the kind of areas that the smallmouth like to set up in. And a lot of times they're gonna be spawning, you know, 10 to 15 feet deep, especially in a lake like Table Rock, it's got really good visibility. It's not uncommon for the water clarity to be, you know, 15, 16 feet of visibility. Those fish, are probably not gonna be up in three or four feet of water. Your better fish are gonna be out there in 10. So look a little bit deeper. It can be hard to see if you've got any kind of chop, but you get a good pair of polarized sunglasses. I mean, I've been fishing with these Bajio sunglasses. I really like them, whatever brand it is, just make sure it cuts the glare of the sun and you can see down there a little bit deeper. If you've got full sunshine, that's key. Um, less wind is key, but a really good way to find those fish and to catch those fish is to cast a drop shot 
or a Ned rig. Really, when that's going on, that's uh, that's the two baits that you need. That's the main two baits that you need. Just get in those areas that are spawning flats and spawning pockets, and just cast. Cover some water, drag it real slow, shake it, put you a you know straight tail worm on there. Robo worms a popular worm. Ned rig, whatever bait you like, little three inch bait, TRD. Just cover some water on those high percentage areas and it can be really phenomenal. You can also throw a C rig in there, Carolina rig, you know, a little bit lighter Carolina rig. Sometimes that will activate those fish when, you know, they're, they don't want that drop shot or the uh, Ned rig, but you kind of got to rotate through those three. But I think a drop shot and a Ned rig most of the time is going to be all you need. Light line, you know, 10 pound test, spinning rod, seven foot medium heavy spinning rod. Hit those, target those areas. If they're in there, you're gonna start getting bites pretty quick. That's all I got for you. Thanks for checking out this video. Like I said earlier, give me a thumbs up if you appreciate the content. Subscribe to the channel. This applies to almost every lake in the country. You can use these patterns in the springtime to locate and catch fish from the pre-spawn all the way up to the spawn. And then during the post-spawn, after they're done spawning, they're gonna kinda of hang around in those same spawning areas for a while and they're gonna typically make their way out deeper or to some nearby cover and just kind of rest. So I hope this video helps you, I hope it makes sense. If you've got any questions, I'd uh, love to hear your comments on some of your ways that you attack spring fish, you know, during the pre-spawn and, and on into the spawn. Um, that's what this channel is about. It's about learning, it's about sharing information. And until next time.